In this course, I will be dividing the discussions into three episodes. The first episode is about the nature of conflict and preliminary provisions of Republic Act 9285, basically known as the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 2004. In the second episode, uh, we will be discussing the pertinent or the remaining pertinent provisions of the Republic Act 9285. And in the last episode, uh, the discussion will center on crisis management. So dispute resolution and crisis management subject is one of the courses under criminal sociology. Again, there are six major areas in criminology. And criminal sociology is one of those areas which will be uh, covered in a criminology licensure examination. So criminal sociology is equivalent to 15% from the total um, score in the, in the criminology licensure examination. Also, dispute resolution is one of the new subjects introduced to the new curriculum by the Commission on Higher Education. So we need to study the topics under dispute resolution and crisis management, not only because this is a new subject, but there are also cases that some of the topics will come out in the board examination, and the topics that we will be discussing in this course will be very useful as an application when you will be applying or when you are already in a law enforcement job. So let us start by first determining the nature of conflict or conflict can also be labeled as dispute. So a conflict is any activity which takes place in a conscious beings, individual or group, wish to carry out mutually inconsistent acts concerning their wants, needs or obligations. It may also refer to natural disagreement between people which may be physical or between conflicting ideas. Conflict comes from the Latin word conflingere which means come together for a battle. So, so basically conflict occurs when there is a disagreement between either two individuals or two different groups. So for example, if a particular person must move prefer a color na red compared to the other individual na mo prefer of color na blue so ang ilaha nga preferences could be something that would create conflict okay ang conflict could be something that concerns not just on a particular wants of a person pero appeal na ang ilang needs or obligations as human beings as we are, conflict is a very natural phenomenon in our daily lives. So, na mo usahay nga magkakonflikto ta o ideas between uh, between other persons o sa imo nga o mo usahay um, a conflict of ideas between you and your siblings, a conflict of ideas between you and your classmates, conflict of ideas between you and your instructors. So usually, ang conflict becomes part of our daily lives already. So, um, it is very important for us to know conflict at the same time on how to handle conflicts because when you will apply for a law enforcement job, you have to remember nga ang una ni mong kalagmitan nga trabaho is to resolve, to resolve conflicts nga naa sa community. Also, it is very important to note that because of conflict, there are a lot of crimes that occur. Because ang conflict usa sa pinaka root causes of criminality. Daghang mga tao nga nakapatay og uh, silingan, nakapatay og uh, relatives, daghang managasawa nga nagbulag simply because there is this agreement of between two between that two persons or na ay wala pa nagsinaptanay so kung wala pa nagsinaptanay kung na ay disagreement na ay possibility nga crime will occur according to karl marx in his conflict theory conflict and tensions arise when resources status and power are unevenly distributed between groups in society and that these conflicts become the engine for social change. I put some examples on the, on the presentation like example number one, labor dispute between employer and employee. So 
kung ang employee thinks that the benefits which rightfully belongs to him uh, were not given by the employer. So may tabo, conflict or tensions will occur. So daghang mga employees na mo resort sa dole para mo complain sa ilang empleyado. Also, the most common one is the conflict with, between the New People's Army and the Philippine government. So usually this conflict between the rebel group and our government often results to bloody incidents. Nga naman because New People's Army thinks that um, our laws are only made for against the poor. So basically, um, since it is only made for the poor, uh, in pay people believes that um, uh, there is under resourcing or there is no equal or impartial distribution as to resources among members of the society. So muna yung nakaingon nga, ang kaninga disagreement usually uh, end up into different bloody incidents as can be seen in different news outlets, sa newspapers, sa radio, na ito mabaluan nga, dahil ka nangamatay ito ang aning nga, conflict between NPA and the Philippine government. So basically, ang kaninga tensions or kaninga conflict that exists in the society according to Karl Marx is something that will uh, result to social change. So some of the theories drawn from the conflict theory of Karl Marx are feminist theory, the critical race theory, and the last one is the queer theory. So our feminist theory includes attempts to describe and explain how gender systems work as well as a consideration of normative or ethical issues such as whether a society's gender arrangements are fair. So basically, can feminist theory is something that would explain kung sa ang sistema na sa society because usually, um, uh, human beings as we are, we think that there is no impartiality between male and female. That sometimes, most society would think or would label women as weaker a species compared to the male. So the perception that males are superior than the female is something that also creates disagreement. Next is the critical race theory. The view that the law and legal institutions are inherently racist and that race itself, instead of being biologically grounded and natural, is a socially constructed concept that is used by white people to further their economic and political interests at the expense of people of color. So according to critical race theory, race is just a concept socially constructed by the white people to further their economic and political interests at the expense of people of color. So, atong makita sa toang society karun, there is a conflict between, there is a gap in terms of treatment between white people and black or brown colored individuals. Now usually, magula, ang may tabo, kani po mga brown, like Filipinos, Filipinos like us, uh, taas na kayo taog appreciation, taas na kayo taog uh, panglantaw sa mga white people. Sa so, itong paminaw, nga Americano man eh, or British man eh, as long as white skin, paminaw na itong, these individuals are geniuses or intellectuals, or these people are 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 much superior that's much superior than us so ang may tabo kung kung na ay uh, racism racist culture between americans and uh, the filipinos or the brown individuals na ay possibility nga na ay crime na may tabo even the news lately makita nato nga some of the asians living in the united states were subjected to the racist culture in America. And uh, looy kayo lang tawag na ngayon sa lani. Uh, some of them um, suffered humiliation while living in the United States. The last one is the queer theory. The lens or the queer theory is the lens used to explore and challenge how scholars, activists, artistic texts, and the media perpetrate gender and sex based binaries and its goal is to undo hierarchies and fight against social inequalities. So I think in the Philippines we have this liberty to have our LGBTQ express their own ideas. 
At the same time, um, we are, I think, on the stage nga sensitive ta. Sensitive ta sa atuang nga opposite nga gender. So, ang core theory is something that we'll explore kung unsa ipambuhat sa mga scholars, ang mga aktivista, uh, mga journalists, or ang media against to perpetrate, rather, on gender and sex-based binaries. And its goal is to undo hierarchies and fight against social inequalities. So again, conflict is already a person, already a part um, in our daily living. So, uh, bisag asa tamo adto, bisag asa tanapita, there are always cases nga magka-conflict ta with another individual. So, these conflicts might be trivial, or some of the conflicts that we face might be very vital in our daily living. So Kenneth Thomas and Ralph Kelman introduced five resolution strategies which humans usually resort to once they are in conflict. So uh, usually, kaning uh, lima ka strategies, osa or dua ani ang atuang nga ginayutilized once like a conflict to tawin with other person. Like say, for example, um, na kay conflict between you and your parents, kay ikaw, ganahan ka nga uh, mulaag o magabi eh, pero imo ang ginikanan, din ganahan nga maglaag ka o magwander sa dumagini city at around 12 o'clock midnight. So, may tabo, kaning conflict of ideas is something that would create tensions between you na usa ka estudyante o sa imo nga ginikanan. So, usa ni Ani, usa sa mga resolution strategies Moy posible ni mga ginayutilized. So, ang Thomas Kelman instrument or ang TKI is designed to measure person's behavior in conflict situations. So, conflict situations are those which concerns two people who appear to be incompatible. So, according to Thomas and Kelman, there are only two dimensions during conflict situations. So, as you can see um, on the screen, the dimensions are assertiveness, cooperativeness. So when you say assertiveness, the extent to which the person attempts to satisfy his own concerns. Or ikaduha, cooperativeness, the extent to which the person attempts to satisfy the other person's concerns. So anakalahi aring duha, let's say for example, a while ago, um, the example is, ganahan kang mulaag, magabi eh. Pero yung huwag gini ka na, diligalahan nga, uh, maglatagaw ka during night time. So, ang may tabo, posibly nga resort ka either on assertiveness or cooperativeness. So, assertiveness, buti pa sa bot, you find something. You find avenues to satisfy your own concerns. Meaning, bahala gula ni sugot ang imong ginikanan, still, bahala gula ni sugot, nilaag na doon dyan ka during night time. Pero, if you will resort to cooperativeness, buti pa sa bot, even if you do not like the idea or the perception or the concern coming from the parents, mas ganahan ka nga i-follow or satisfy ang, ang, ang idea sa imong ginikanan compared sa imong nga kaugaling nga concern. So instead nga mulaag ka, even though ganahan ka mulaag during night time, may tabo nga you just obey or take heed on the instruction of your parents. So may ginatawag o cooperativeness. So again, when we say assertiveness, you tend to satisfy your own concerns or your own um, impulses. While cooperativeness, you satisfy other person's concerns. So the five resolution strategies are, as you can see in your screen, we have avoiding, accommodating, we also have collaborating, competing, and compromising. So, uh, nagadepende or kaning nga lima, pwede nga, again, pwede siyang part sa assertiveness or pwede siyang part sa cooperativeness. So, we will discuss each one of the resolution strategies. So, let us start first with um, avoiding. Okay? Avoiding is unassertive and uncooperative. Again, kung sa buti pa sa buti assertive, ako balik ko na Assertiveness meaning you dis, you satisfy your own wants, you satisfy your own, uh, you satisfy your own concerns. Cooperativeness meaning 
you satisfy other people's concerns or other people's wants. So in this case, ang avoiding is not something that satisfy your concerns. It is also a strategy that, that does not satisfy the wants or the concerns of other people. Like say for example, for example, if there is a project that is given to you by your instructor, tapos um, dili ka ganahan nga mugama sa project. Remember that uh, if a professor gives you a project, of course, the professor wants you to work on the project. And if you work on the project, the concern of the professor will be fulfilled. Okay? Will be fulfilled. But on the other way around, ang imo gihimo is, you just avoid, you just avoid yourself from doing the project. And you do not deal in the, in the completion of the project. So what happens is, an assertive ka, wala na satisfy ang imong kaugalingon, ang imong concerns, at the same time, wala po na satisfy ang imong concerns sa imong professor. So in avoiding, the person neither pursues his own concerns, nor those of the other individual. Thus, he does not deal with the conflict. It takes in the form of sidestepping the issue, postponing an issue, until a better time, or simply withdrawing from a threatening situation. This might be easy for the facilitator, but when conflict is avoided, according to Thomas and Kilman, when conflict is avoided, nothing is resolved. So, a good example of avoiding is bullying victimization. So, kung naaga ni ang bullying, usually ang victim, pag lantaw niya nga sa una, na ang bullying kapatulong, usually mo avoid. Mo avoid siya. So, ang naitabo, if in case gi-avoid na sige ang bully, dili ni mo gi-confront, dili ni mo atubangon on the, uh, the real feeling that you feel inside uh, when you are bullied. What happens is, ang bullying will continue. So, kinahalan ni mo siya nga, kinahalan ni mo nga i-confront, kinahalan ni mo pamagpangitan o solution para ang bullying will not continue. So, kung natay conflict within ourselves or conflict sa atong pamilya and we will avoid ourselves from solving the conflict, what happened is, nothing is resolved. So what is required for the conflict to be resolved is that you have to confront and you have to provide solutions uh, on the conflict. The next one is competing. This is assertive but uncooperative. Ngano mga uncooperative? Simply because in competing, when you compete, you do not satisfy the concerns of other individuals. But you satisfy your own wants or your own impulses. So, muna ginatawag siya o assertive. Assertive siya kay isatisfy ni mo imuhang concern. Isatisfy ni mo ang imuhang nga impulses. And cooperative kay di ka ganahan nga mo satisfy sa concerns or wants sa lain nga tao. So, competing is a power-oriented mode in which you use whatever power seems appropriate to win your own position your ability to argue, your rank, even economic status. Competing means standing up on something which you believe is right. It is used by people who plan to win in a conflict situation. So again, uh, example kaganina is, na kay conflict sa imong aginikan because you want to wander in the city during night time. Pero imong aginikan din iganahan nga maglaag ka. So what you do is, you use your ability to argue makikumpete ka para malabuan ni mo ang argument sa imong ginikanan. Para ngita ka, mangita ka paagi para mas matuhuan ka o para makonvince ni mo ang imong ginikanan. But at the same time, what you are actually doing is trying to satisfy your your own concern. Competing may work in sports or in war, but it is rarely a good strategy for group problem solving. So kung naay problema, competing is not actually a good resolution strategy. Ang uh, makikumpit ka is not a good uh, strategy to solve a problem. So what you do supposedly is you have to go to the person, tapos kumahimo, you have to unify your efforts with that individual and provide solution to the problem. Naagani uban ng mga tao ng ilang gamito ng ilang ha? economic status o ilang gamito ng ilang rangko. Okay? Just to win an argument. Nagaling ba nung ingon nga, uh, toho ako kaya ako may professional. Uh, toho na ako kaya nagan kong awards or kung loud ako or uh, uh, in the police station ako may uh, 
commission officer so dapat adunay mo moto na ko in my argument so kani nga mga strategy are strategies are part of what we call as competing but then again guys a competing is not actually good for problem solving now let us go to the third one which is accommodating accommodating is unassertive but cooperative so again unsa kanong unassertive man siya because in accommodating you do not satisfy your wants okay cooperative in a sense that you want to satisfy other persons concern again accommodating siya in a sense that dili ka ganahan ang imuha mo matuman ganahan ka nga ang ganahan or ang wants or ang concerns sa lain nga tawo maoy masunod which is the complete opposite of competing so the individual neglects his own concerns to satisfy the concerns of other person there is an element of self sacrifice it takes in the form of selfless generosity obeying other person's order when you prefer not to yielding to another to another's point of view so if there is an argument di ka ganahan og langas di ka ganahan og disagreement what you do is to simply give in to the argument of other individual so musugot la ka pasagdaan lang nimo kun unsay ganahan sa lain nga tawo you simply satisfy it is a form of self sacrifice when you you satisfy the wants of another person however according to Thomas and Kelman this is less helpful when one party accommodates merely to preserve harmony usually ma hitabo ni kung naay panaglalis between you and other individuals so di ka ganahan nga magka conflict mo or dili ka ganahan nga naay tension between you and him so what you do is to preserve the harmony you just accommodate the idea of another person so like avoidance this can result to unresolved issues because too much accommodation can result of having one party takes control in most conversations so, amay tabo kato na lamang classmate nimo nga kusog ko ayo mo tabi uy pasagdaan lang nimo de ikaw tagaan ra nimo mo give way lang kas kung masige ra ka give way what happens is issues will remain unresolved but the best conflict resolution strategy among the five is what we call as collaborating because in collaborating this is assertive and cooperative nganong assertive man because you you do not just um satisfy your own impulses you do not just satisfy your own concerns but you also satisfy the concern of your uh of the other individual so assertive siya at the same time cooperative so this is the complete opposite of avoiding it involves an attempt to work with others to find solution that fully satisfy both concerns so kung naka problema ka if you have this agreement with the other individual if you have problems like a particular project uh, that is tasked to you to comply so ay mo buhaton is para matuman ang imo o matuman pod ang ang concern sa imo nga classmate what you do is you collaborate okay you collaborate with the other guy and find solutions to the problem it might take in a form of exploring the root cause of disagreement to learn from each other's insights and to find a creative solution to an interpersonal conflict so like uh if there is collaboration i think crime will not occur because in collaboration what happens is two individuals work with each other two groups or three groups will work hand in hand in order to find out the common disagreement or the common problem that arise in the conversation or in the treatment between one person and the other so importante kayo ang collaboration the last one is the last one is compromising this is the last conflict resolution strategy uh this is the concept The concept is that everyone gives up a little of what they want. No one gets everything they want. So compromise is perceived as being fair even if no one is particularly happy with the outcome. So basically ang compromising is you give something. You compromise something like o oh, sige, dili man ko dinu palagon og magabi eh. Dili man ko dinu palagon og magabi eh. Ako buhaton, kadi man ko makagawas sa balay, may pay magdula ko give in. 
Huwag tayo magdula kung mobile legend. So, ang ginatawag ana, ang tawag ana nga strategy is compromising. So, wala na ito man, ang imong ginikanan, although, ang imong ginikanan, hindi ka kailangan maglaag, but then again, you make a compromise nga, okay, hindi ko maglaag, hindi ma-satisfy akong watch, but I will play, I will play mobile legend the whole night. So, na ay compromising. Ang compromising again, could not be a good solution, or could not be a good resolution strategy to a particular conflict. So, mauto ay five conflict resolution strategies that we usually utilize whenever we face conflict. So, either one of these is used or is utilized by us whenever we have disagreements with another individual. So, if you notice, because of conflicts, there are a lot of cases filed in the court. So, tungod sa kadaghan sa mga complaints, sa kadaghan ng kaso, ng gifile sa korte, ang mahitabo is, ang ato ang korte, ato ang judge is overwhelmed, already overwhelmed with a lot of um, cases from different persons. And usually, ang usa ka kaso, one, just one criminal case, sometimes it will take years for it to be resolved or for it to be given judgment. So, naayuban, like say for example, violation of Republic Act 9165, yeah, wala ni confess, ang accused, sometimes it will take five or even ulum katuig o sa matagaan o judgment. Tungod kay daghan kaayo ang ang sulur baron. Daghan kayo ang mga kaso nga naa sa korte. So, in order to somehow um, declag court dockets or to somehow, you know, lighten up the load of our judges in the Philippines, na ay ginatawag ng Republic Act 9285, the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 2004. Because the provisions of Republic Act 9285 is something that would declare court dockets, something that would not just lighten the load of the prosecutor, but also something that will, uh, you know, um, reduce the load or the work of our judges in in various courts. So, in the introductory provisions of Republic Act 9285, it states that the state shall encourage and actively promote the use of alternative dispute resolution or EDR as an important means to achieve speedy and impartial justice and declare court dockets. So, alternative dispute resolution refers to any process or procedure used to resolve dispute or controversy other than by adjudication of a presiding judge. So meaning, wala ilabot ang huwis or an officer of a government agency as defined by Republic Act 9285 in which a third party participates to assist in the resolving of issues. So buti pa sa buti na ika na ilain nga tao, a third party which will participate or which will aid in the resolving of issues, which either be in the form of, number one, arbitration, pwede mediation, pwede conciliation, pwede po early neutral evaluation, pwede mini-trial, or any combination thereof. So meaning, ang EDR, or Alternative Dispute Resolution, is the resolving of the controversy, or a dispute, With an aid of a third party. Kisam ni third party. Dili to a third party. Dili to judge. Dili pareha atong court trial na ang third party ang huwis na mula magpreside sa kaso. In this case, ang magmediate is ang third party. Okay? Kisam ng first party. Ang first party pwede ka tong accused. Second party ka tong atong complainant. So ang third party ka tong mumediate sa Controversy. So, ang purpose sa third party is to uh, provide solution sa conflict between two individuals. So, let us find out the differences between arbitration, mediation, and other um, strategies in resolving, in resolving issues. So, the first one that we have to define is um, arbitration. So, arbitration means voluntary dispute resolution process in which one or more arbitrators are appointed in accordance with an agreement of the parties or rules promulgated pursuant to Republic Act 9285 resolve an issue by rendering an award. Take note, 
ang award refers to the final decision of an arbitrator. So kung isa may arbitrator, ang arbitrator katong ni conduct o arbitration. Okay? Ang arbitrator again is the one who conducts the procedures of arbitration. So, on the other hand, mediation means voluntary process in which a mediator selected by the disputing parties facilitates communication and negotiation and assists the parties in reaching a voluntary agreement regarding a dispute. Settlement is made by the parties themselves. So basically, if you will scrutinize the differences between arbitration and mediation is ang arbitration, ang award, ang gagama sa award o ang gagama sa final decision is no other than the arbitrator himself. I repeat, ang sa arbitration, ang gagama sa final decision is ang arbitrator. While on the other hand, kung mediation, kung mediation na, kung mediation, ang mahitabo, ang magama sa final decision will be the parties involved. Since sa mga parties involved, katong complainant o accused. Right? So, sila mo'y magsabot. Sila mo'y magama sa agreement. Sa mediation. So, sa may bato sa mediator. A mediator is simply to mediate on the conflict or the controversy between these two individuals. Pero, iyan tagaan o luxury nga ang accused o ang complainant mo'y musito sa ilang nga controversy. Again, ang arbitration, ang mugama sa final decision is arbitrator. Mediation, ang mugama is ang mga parties involved. Next is conciliation. Involve the assistance of a neutral third party who plays an advisory role in reaching an agreement. I repeat, kaning sa conciliation, nakalahi niya sa mediation o arbitration is that ang third party only plays an advisory role in reaching an agreement. So meaning, ego na siyang tighatag o ad advice based on his specialization, based on his specialization or expertise. Nahi sa mediation o arbitration. The next one are mediation, arbitration, and early neutral evaluation. Mediation arbitration is a step dispute resolution process involving both mediation and arbitration. So basically, the combination between mediation and arbitration is known as mediation arbitration. While early neutral evaluation is an alternative dispute resolution process wherein parties and their lawyers are brought together early in a pretrial phase to present summaries of their cases and receive a non-binding assessment by an experienced neutral person with expertise in the subject in, a, in the substance of a dispute. So, an early neutral evaluation is conducted before trial or during pre-trial phase. Nga wala pa niya ito sa korte. So, na ay uh, expert specialized on a particular field nga siya mo'y maghatag o advice. For example, uh, uh, let's have uh, traffic incidents. Okay? Traffic incidents. So, si person A iyang gidasmagan si person B. So, si person B, nikiha dito sa korte. So, posible nga, i-invite ang traffic investigator to somehow lay down his um, opinion on the particular case. So, posible nga ngon ang, uh, ang traffic investigator nga may sala si person A. So, therefore, uh, mo suggest si traffic investigator nga isold na lang, like civil damages na lang, bayaran na lamang para na agreement para din na kinalang mo ato dito sa korte. So, that is an example of early neutral evaluation. The next ones are mini trial and EDR provider. Mini trial is a structural dispute resolution, a method in which the merits of a case are argued before a panel consisting of senior decision makers with or without the presence of a neutral third person after which the parties seek a negotiated settlement. So, a mini trial comprising, comprises a panel of uh, senior decision makers. So, kaning a senior decision makers is something that will provide advices, something that will provide um, opinions on a particular controversy and they, they will also help in solving the, the dispute. On the other hand, we have EDR provider. 
means institutions or persons accredited as mediator, conciliator, arbitrator, neutral evaluator, or any person exercising similar functions in any alternative dispute resolution system. So, kung katong mga institution, accredited to sila para mo mediate, para mo, uh, mo hatag conciliation, or mo arbitrate, ang tawag nila is ADR provider. Next one is non-party participant versus proceedings. So, when we say non-party participant, this means a person other than a party or mediator who participates in a mediation proceeding, pwede siya witness, pwede pa siya resource person or expert. Ang tawag ano is non-party participant. Ang non-party participant again, walay appeal sa controversy. Dili po siya mediator. Dili po siya accused, dili po siya complainant. Kung dili, posible na siya nga, witness siya, resource person or expert. Ang judicial, administrative, or other adjudicative process, including related pre-hearing motions, conferences, and discovery, ang tawag ani is proceeding. However, not all crimes or not not all controversies can be um, subjected to mediation or arbitration. Kaya na mga kaso nga exempted sa application sa Republic Act 9285. Like, for example, we have number one, uh, labor disputes, again, we say labor disputes, a controversy between um, employees versus the employers, the civil status of persons, the, valid, the validity of marriage, dili pwede nga, i-undergo ni siya o mediation or masubject siya sa arbitration. Any ground for legal separation, the jurisdiction of course, like say for example, is pionage or, or any crimes against national security. Um, we'll have to undergo trial in the court. Future legitim uh, or rightful heir can also be exempted in the application of 9285. Criminal liability, um, nakapatay, dili pwede nga mo undergo o mediation. Why? Because there is a um, the incurring of uh, criminal liability. Those which by law cannot be compromised. So these are the exceptions to the application of Republic Act 9285. Next, confidentiality of information. Um, information obtained through mediation shall be privileged and confidential. So, dili pwede nga, imo ni siyang disclose Imo siyang gitabi dito sa society because that is not allowed by, by law according to Republic Act 9285. A party, a mediator, or a non-party participant may refuse to disclose and may prevent any other person from disclosing a mediation communication. Confidential information shall not be subject to discovery and shall be inadmissible if any adversarial proceeding with the judicial or quasi-judicial. Next, in such an adversarial proceeding, the following persons involved or previously involved in a mediation may not be compelled to disclose confidential information obtained during mediation. So meaning, when we say compelled, dili ka mapugos, dili mapugos or dili ma-required ng antawo apil sa mediation process mo, di, mo disclose sa confidential information. Like say for example, number one is the parties to the dispute, ang complainant or accused, the mediator or mediators, the counsel for the parties, the non-party participants, any person hired or engaged in connection with the mediation as secretary, stenographer, clerk, or assistant, and any other person who obtains or possesses confidential information by reason of his or her profession are not actually compelled or required to disclose this, uh, the information obtained from the mediation process. The next one is, the protections of this act shall continue to apply even if a mediator is found to have failed to act impartial, impartially. So we say act impartially, but if pasabot walay equality or fairness in uh, during the mediation process. So even though nakita nga walay impartiality sa mediator, kinahanglan i-maintain na dyan po ang confidentiality of information. Last one is, a mediator may not be called to testify Alright, take note of this. 
according to Republic Act 9285, a mediator cannot be called to testify to provide information gathered in mediation. A mediator who is wrongfully subpoenaed shall be reimbursed the full cost of his attorney's fees and related expenses. Now let us go now to Section 30 and Section 31 of Republic Act 9285. So Section 30 talks about the place of arbitration. So the parties are free to agree on the place of arbitration. So buti pa sabot, kamo mo'y magsabot kung asa dapat mo magabot. Asa ang venue sa arbitration. Failing such agreement, kung dili magkasabot, the place of arbitration shall be in Metro Manila. So take note of that, cadets. So kung dili magkasinabot gani, like say for example, ang usa ganas dumagiti ang uh, usa ganas dumagiti city. Ang usa ganahan dito sa uh, ganahan dito sa Mindanao. According to the law, uh, failing such agreement, the place of arbitration shall be in Metro Manila unless an arbitral tribunal having regard to the circumstances of the case including the convenience of the parties shall decide on a different place of arbitration. So ang usa Mindanao, ang usa is Negros Oriental, Visayas, so pwede nga ang arbitral tribunal mo'y mo determine para convenient. Kaya ang usa, Mindanao, usa, Visayas, yung Atos Manila mag, mag, magsitol. So, dili pwede. Dili convenient kayo. So, ang may tabo, uh, ang arbitral tribunal mo hatag o specific uh, venue na convenient sa both parties. But in other cases, like puro sila nasa Luzon, di magkasinabot according to the law sa Metro Manila ang venue. The next one is Section 31, Language of the Arbitration. The parties are free to agree on the language or languages to be used in the arbitral proceedings. Failing such agreement, the language to be used shall be English in international arbitration, an English or Filipino for domestic arbitration, unless the arbitral tribunal shall determine a different or another language or languages to be used in the proceedings. So it is very clear, according to Section 31, nga ang language nga gamiton, okay, ang language sa award shall be, or even ang language nga gamiton sa proceedings, dapat English dun siya nga language. Sa international, so may buti pa ng international arbitration. So, international arbitration, meaning sa gawas, lahi nga country ang nag-arbitrate or nag, nagpatunga sa controversy. Kung domestic, buti pa sabot, kung Pilipinas, na itabo, ang ibang kontra, ang accused, ang complainant, puro taga Pilipinas, puro Filipino. So, during the proceedings, or bisan pa ang award nga gihatag, ang gamit ng languages, pwede ang English or pwede ang Filipino. So again, domestic arbitration. Domestic arbitration shall continue to be governed by Republic Act No. 876 known as the Arbitration Law as amended by Republic Act 9285. The term domestic arbitration as used herein shall mean an arbitration that is not international. So again, international arbitration buti pa sabot sa gawas or na ay lahing country na nagmediate o nagtatunga sa controversy. On the other hand, kung domestic arbitration, buti pa sabot, puro lang Pinoy ang involved na lang dili sa Pilipinas. Next, ad hoc arbitration. Ad hoc arbitration means arbitration administered by an administrator and or the parties themselves. An arbitration admi administered by, the, by an institution shall be regarded as ad hoc arbitration if such institution is not a permanent or regular arbitration institution in the Philippines. So, what is the ad hoc arbitration? Muli katok administered by an administrator or the parties themselves. Ang katong accused o ang complainant. Next is all confirmation of award. So, a domestic, a domestic arbitral award when you confirm shall be enforced in the same manner as final ad executory decisions of the regional trial court. So, meaning, kung say, when we say award again, this refers to the final decision of the arbitrator. So, if in case na nai award, pwede siya mahimu nga, makonsider siya na final and executory decisions of the RTC. 
the confirmation of the dismissal award shall be made by the regional trial court in accordance with the rules of procedure to be promulgated by the Supreme Court. On the other hand, the CIAC arbitral award need not be to be confirmed by the regional trial court to be executory as provided under Executive Order Number 1008. So, unsa maning CIAC? Ang CIAC or Construction Industry Arbitration Commission uh, refers to a particular commission that will um, settle controversies uh, regarding construction or so any uh, controversies that is controversies that is related to construction. So, pwede siya nga um, uh, pwede siya nga include those between or among parties to or who are otherwise bound by an arbitration agreement directly or by reference whether such parties are project owner sa usaka construction, contractor, subcontractor, quantity surveyor, bondsman or issuer of an insurance policy in a construction project. So, kani nga mga controversies kay ka-involve aning nga different personalities sa construction ang mo uh, settle aning controversy or mo mediate or mo arbitrate is no other than the Construction Industry Arbitration Commission or the CIAC. Next is Foreign Arbitral Awards. The application of the New York Convention. So the New York Convention shall govern the recognition and enforcement of arbitral awards. The recognition and enforcement of such arbitral awards shall be filed with the regional court. So, kung um, gagikan sa uh, arbitral award is uh, in the subject of the New York Convention, kinala siya nga, gifile dito sa regional trial court. The party relying on the award or applying for its enforcement shall file with the court the original or authenticated copy of the award and the arbitration agreement. So, kinala nga, original. Okay, original nga copy sa arbitration award ang gift file dito sa RTC. If the award or agreement is not made in any of the official languages, the party shall supply a duly certified translation thereof into any such any of such languages. So, kinalang nga, it translate. Like say, for example, hey, nga language, it translate siya nga, masapta. Like say, for example, um, perhaps Mandarin or Spanish into English languages or Cebuano into lang, uh, English language. The applicant shall establish that the country in which foreign arbitration award was made is a party to the New York Convention. So meaning, dili tanang countries in the whole world yung appeal sa New York Convention. So kato lang na appeal sa New York Convention mo ay uh, dapat pwede nga mga sa arbitration award. If the application for rejection or suspension of enforcement of an award has been made, the regional trial court may if it considers it proper, vacate its decision. So, meaning, if na application sa RTC na dili i-consider or dili i-suspend or dili i-enforce kung unsa ang na agreement or kung sa provision sa agreement sa arbitral award, pwede nga ang regional trial court will vacate the decision. So, dili siya i-implement. The Convention on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitral Awards is also known as the New York Arbitration Convention or the New York Convention. This is one of the key instruments in international arbitration. The New York Convention applies to the recognition and enforcement of foreign arbitral awards and the referral by a court to arbitration. So, the New York Convention is something that would recognize any arbitration or international arbitration proceedings. So, kung unsay na sabutan sa based sa New York Arbitration Convention should be recognized by the regional court nga nga naa sa country nga appeal sa New York Convention. So, like say for example, kung ang Pilipinas appeal sa appeal man sa New York Convention, so basically what will be the, the agreements that is being um, given by the arbitrators in the international arbitration, arbitration proceedings should be recognized also by our regional trial court. Unless, of course, um, not a ginatawag rejection of a foreign arbitral award. So, pwede siya nga ma-reject as I have said a while ago. So, section 45, rejection of a foreign arbitral award. A party to a foreign arbitration proceedings may oppose 
an application for recognition and enforcement of the arbitral award in accordance with the procedural rules to be promulgated by the Supreme Court only on the following grounds. So, Section 5 sa Loyal Convention. So, kanilang mga grounds, boy pwedeng basihan na pwedeng ma-reject ang award sa uh, international arbitration proceedings. So, kung panangita na ay arbitration between New People's Army and the Philippine government and there is already an award, arbitration award um, given by the third party country, so dapat masunod siya. Pero na ay mga exceptions na ma-reject or dili ma-enforce ang arbitral award. For example, under letter A, the parties to the agreement were under some incapacity or the said agreement is not valid under the law to which the parties have subjected it. Or ikaduha, the party against whom the award is invoked was not given proper notice, was not notified of the appointment of the arbitrator or of the arbitration proceedings or was otherwise unable to present his case. So pwede siya mabasihan na nga, ma-reject ang current arbitration award. Next one is, the award deals with a difference not contemplated by or not falling within the terms of the submission to arbitration or it contains decisions on matters beyond the scope of the submission to arbitration. So, na exit ang arbitration award so pwede siya nga ma-reject sa, uh, uh, sa one of the parties involved therein. Next is, the composition of that arbitral authority or that our arbitral procedure was not in accordance with the agreement of the parties or failing such agreement was not in accordance with the law of the country where the arbitration took place. Take note nga ang rules arbitration, okay? Ang rules arbitration ang proceedings should be in accordance kung this ang lugar o this ang country nga mo'y host sa arbitration proceedings. So kung nasa Vietnam, ang ang arbitration proceeding, dapat ang regulations, dapat ang proceeding sa Vietnam mo'y masunod. The award has not yet become binding on the parties or has been set aside or suspended by a competent authority of the country in which or under the law of which that award was made or meaning is suspended or is suspend ang, uh, ang arbitration award sa country nga sa country nga nag-host sa arbitration proceedings. The subject matter of the difference is not capable of settlement by arbitration under the law of the country. Meaning, hindi pwede nga masettle. Wala na po sa scope sa arbitration nga uh, nga settle ang controversy. The recognition or enforcement of the award would be contrary to the public policy of the country. So, usap po na sa masyanan nga hindi pwede nga i-accept hindi li i-reject lang ang foreign arbitration award. So, natay ginatawag of Office for Alternative Dispute Resolution or the OADR. So, ang OADR or Office for Alternative Dispute Resolution is under the Department of Justice. So, nasa sa executive branch which shall have a secretariat to be headed by an executive director the executive director shall be appointed by the President of the Philippines. So take note, ang Office for Alternative Dispute Resolution is under the Office of the Department of Justice. So the Department of Justice, on the other hand, belongs to the executive branch of the government. Kaya naman tayo, executive, legislative, o judiciary branches of the government. So the Department of Justice na naadya na under ang OADR belongs to, a, to the executive branch of the government. So here are the functions of the OADR. Number one, to promote, develop, and expand the use of ADR or alternative dispute resolution in private and public sectors. To monitor, study, and evaluate the use of ADR by private and public sectors to recommend to Congress needful statutory changes to develop, strengthen, and improve ADR practices in accordance with international standards, to make studies on and provide linkages for the development, implementation, 
monitoring and evaluation of government and private EDR programs. So compile and publish a list of roster of EDR providers or practitioners and to compile a list or roster of foreign or international EDR provider or practitioner. So these are basically the functions of the Office of Alternative Dispute Resolution. Now let us go now to the ethical conduct of a mediator. So what's a mediator? A mediator is someone is a third party uh, in a mediation, in a mediation proceedings. Again, ang nakalahi sa mediation of arbitration is that ang arbitration, ang award or final decision is made by the arbitrators themselves, while the mediation, ang magama sa agreement, are the two parties involved, the accused and the complainant who are involved in the controversy. So these are the ethical conduct of a mediator. Number one is competence. It is not required that a mediator shall have special qualifications. Take note. Walay special qualifications or background or profession that is required to become a mediator. Pero, nasiay mga prerequisites. Una, maintain the continually upgrade uh, her or his professional competence in mediation skills. Mediation skills, guys, is very hard to attain. Kung sao ni mo pagpa Kung ikaw mag mag uh, dapat na kay skills or talent o sa ni mo pag-classify sa anger or sa frustration sa sa complainant o ang sa accused. Okay? Tapos o sa ni mo pag-provide o solution in order to somehow um, um, pacify the escalated situation. O sana sa mga dapat sa skills sa mediator. Ensure that his or her qualifications, training, and experience are known and accepted by the party. So meaning, as a mediator, you have the responsibility to inform, to disclose your qualifications or training and experience in the mediation process. Serve only when his or her qualifications, training, and experience enable him or her to meet the reasonable expectations of the parties and shall not hold himself, herself, out or give the impression that he or she does not have. So meaning, you cannot give what you do not have. So basically, if in case, ang imuha nga uh, qualifications or training or experience, dili mo igo sa scope, sa controversy nga imuha gihandol, dapat imuha nga, imuha nga gi-inform ang parties. Dili kay maghatag ka o impression nga kung saan eh, nga makamao ka. But in reality, wala na kay wala tayo kay skills to handle that specific situation. Note that upon the request of a mediation party, an individual who is requested to serve as a mediator shall disclose his or her qualification to mediate a dispute. As I have stated a while ago, it is the responsibility of the mediator to disclose not just his qualifications but also his trainings and experience in the mediation process. Aside from competence, the second ethical conduct is impartiality. A mediator shall maintain impartiality. So, no impartiality. Buti pa sabot ang impartiality, meaning uh, dapat na kay fairness, dapat na kay equality in terms of treatment between the uh, one party and the other party. So, dapat walay favoritism na dapat himuon on the, on, the, on the course of the mediation process. So, letter A, before accepting a mediation, a mediator shall determine whether there are known facts that would likely to affect the impartiality of the mediator, including a financial or personal interest in the outcome of the mediation and any existing or past relationship with a party or foreseeable participant in the mediation. So, buti pa sabot, dapat usa ni mo dawaton ang mediation. Okay? Dapat usa ka muhatag o usa ka mahimong mediator. Dapat walay variables, walay factors that could somehow um, cloud your wise judgment. Because if there are factors like um, monetary factors, matagaan ka o kwarta, posible sa usa ka party, or basic pariente ni mo, or relative ni mo, ang usa sa mga party, 
uh, impartiality uh, dili ma dili ma practice sa budget or considering the different uh, hindrances or different variables that could influence your judgment. So kung paminaw ni mo, ma, ma, matagahan ka kwarta eh, or, or, or i-bribe pa ka, or parenti ni mo ang isang party, dapat di ka mo accept sa mediation. Next, disclose to the mediation parties any such fact known, known or learned as soon as practical before accepting a mediation. So meaning, if one of the parties is your relative, dapat it has to be disclosed to both parties. If a mediation if a mediator learns any fact described in paragraph A of this article after accepting a mediation, the mediator shall disclose it as soon as practicable to the mediation parties. So kung ulahin na ka, nakadawat na, dawat na nimo ang mediation, na nimo na ka mediator, tapos ulahin na nimo na baluan, na pariente na nimo ni usapa party, dapat, as part of your responsibility, imo gidisclose ka na nga factor. So, posible nga nailahi ng mediator nga mo mo puli. Because that factor alone could be something that will affect, it will cloud your judgment. Next is confidentiality. This is the third ethical conduct that must be observed by the mediator. Again, itong, una, itong balikot, una is competence. Number two is impartiality. Number three is confidentiality. So, a mediator shall keep in utmost confidence all confidential information obtained in the mediation process. So, meaning, as a mediator, as I have stated a while ago, you are not allowed to disclose even the parties involved, even the witness involved, even the stenographer involved in the mediation process. Everyone involved in the uh, proceedings is not allowed to disclose information uh, related to the mediation. So, dapat kung itong mediator, dapat you have to preserve the confidentiality. The fourth one is consent and self-determination. Make reasonable efforts to ensure that each party understands the nature and character of the mediation proceedings. So, sa mediator, dapat imong pabaloon, imong ipasabton ang accused o ang complainant kay involved sa controversy sa mediation proceedings. If a mediator believes that the party who is not represented by counsel is unable to understand or fully participate na wala nakasabot sa proceedings, dapat a mediator may either, number one, limit the scope of the mediation proceedings in a manner consistent with the party's ability to participate or recommend for assistance to the party. Let's say, for example, di siya kasabot of in English during the mediation. So, di ka dapat, nawa siya ay lawyer na mo-assist. So, ikaw mediator, di ka dapat masigig in English. Okay? Okay? That is beyond the party's ability to participate. So, dapat na ay assistance. Dapat, you have to, ang, ang point ano is, dapat maka, maka go ka sa level sa, sa parties. Na dapat, uh, imong assure nga, makasabot o participate ang ang complainant o ang uh, accused. Or, if in case, uh, dili ka pwede sa uh, number one, dapat i terminate ang mediation proceedings knowing that there is no full participation or there is no full understanding of the parties involved in the controversy. A mediator shall put in mind that resolving a dispute and shaping of a voluntary and uncoerced settlement rests with the parties. So, meaning, ang parties na sa ilang nga responsive, na sa ilang nga shoulders, ang paghimo, okay? Ang paghone sa agreement. The next ethical conduct of a mediator is separation of mediation from counseling and legal advice. So, dapat hinugduman po na eh kung mahimo kang mediator po hon. Refrain from giving legal or technical advice and otherwise engaging in counseling or advocacy. Nga numang lili ka dapat maghihatag o uh, legal or technical advice or uh, counseling or advocacy. Because if you will do this, what will happen is um, the parties may think na in favor ka sa pikas. Okay. Kung nag-advocate ka against sa accused, posible nga ang complainant, mag-una-una nga, huwag kay impartiality. Next is abstain from expressing his or her personal opinion. Remember that in the mediation process, 
your job is to mediate. Magpatunga ka na dapat wala kay dapigan between the first party and the second party. So you are not allowed if possible. You have to take hold of your personal opinions on the controversy. Ang imo nga ipotak sa una-una, nga dapat kaninga do ka parties magkasinatanay or will come up into a particular agreement. When either or both parties are not represented by counsel, a mediator shall recommend that the parties seek outside professional advice to help them make informed decision and to understand the implication of any proposal. Or number two, suggest that the parties seek independent legal or technical advice before a settlement agreement is signed. So, mahitabo ni siya if in case ang duha ka parties, ang accused ng complainant, are not represented or are not assisted by a counsel. So, recommend ka nga uh, isik o sa ang advice dito sa lain nga uh, lain nga party like sa lawyer ba kay uh, by making such advice you practice your impartiality. Again, do not you are not allowed to give your personal opinions. You are not even allowed to give your personal legal advice. So, kung walay representation sa council dapat yung silang I recommend to have or to seek independent or technical advice from other person. A mediator who also practices another profession shall not establish a professional relationship in that other profession with one of the parties. For example, a Osaka party, like complainant, is a is a registered criminologist. Dapat you should not associate yourself with one of the parties. Kay basig mingon ka nga a pareha daita nga a registered criminologist. If you will associate yourself or establish professional relationship with, the, with one party, what happens is um, you transgress from one of the ethical conducts of being a mediator and that is impartiality. So, nawala na imuang pagka impartiality o pagka impartial sa pagsito sa controversy. The next one is the charging of fees. A mediator shall fully disclose and explain to the parties the basis of the cost, fees and charges. The mediator who withdraws from mediation shall return to the parties any unearned fee and unused deposit. So meaning kung may withdraw ka sa iyong pagka-mediator, dapat ibalik mo itong sobra. A mediator shall not enter into a fee agreement which is contingent upon the results of the mediation or the amount of the settlement. So, basing bingo ka nga, kung masettle na, tagay ko 5 million, ah, dili po, hindi, dapat ang the costing, the basis of the cost of fees and charges should be made before the, uh, before the mediation proceedings. Next one is, promotion of respect and control of abuse of process. Encourage mutual respect between the parties and shall take reasonable steps subject to the principle of self-determination to limit abuses of the mediation process. Like say, for example, the use of expletives or katong mugamit of um, um, words nga dili maayo. So, dili to napat ni mugi encourage us the mediator. Dapat buyagun ni mo to maintain harmony of the proceedings. Next, ethical conduct is solicitation or acceptance of any gift or uh, ethical conduct that is related to solicitation or acceptance of any gift. No mediator or any member of a mediator's immediate family or his or her agent shall request, solicit, receive, or accept any gift or any type of compensation other than the agreed fee and the expenses in connection with any matter coming before the mediator. So accepting... Um, Gift is not allowed because that will cloud the judgment of the mediator. And bribery should be avoided because uh, that is one of the things that you have to consider in giving a good judgment on a particular controversy. So those are the conducts or the ethical conducts that a mediator should observe in the mediation process. So important thing, huh? Ma observe siya. Kay kung dili ma observe, possibly nga uh, there will be defects in the agreement between the, uh, the, the, the complainant and the accused. So, kinala ang tanan nga, if the conducts mentioned there, therein should be observed by the mediator.
Now, let us go now to the role of parties and their counsels. So, role of the counsel, the lawyer shall view his or her role in a mediation as a collaborator with the other lawyer in working together toward the common goal of helping their clients revolve their or resolve their differences. So, again, ang responsibility of the counsel. When say counsels, I'm referring to the lawyers, of not just the lawyer of the um, aggrieved party or the victims, but also the lawyer of the, the accused. Kaninga mga lawyers should work hand in hand. So, ang purpose sa, sa collaboration should be um, attaining a common agreement to resolve the differences or to resolve the controversy. The lawyer shall encourage and assist his or her client to actively participate in positive discussions. Dili kay magsagitana. If possible, the tone of your voice should be lowered uh, in the mediation proceedings or cooperate in crafting an agreement to resolve their dispute. Kaya nagmita na bagot, it's the tone of the voice that could somehow make the make the make a heated argument. And if there is heated argument, there will be no good outcome during the mediation process. So dapat um, counsel, advice po nga dapat hinay-hinay lang. Okay? Next, the lawyer must assist his or her client to comprehend and appreciate the mediation process and its benefits as well as the client's greater personal responsibility for the success of mediation in resolving the dispute. So let us go now to the stages in the conduct of the mediation process. So I hope this is memorized by you cadets because this is very important possibly in taking the um, criminology licensure examination. So in Maolang Lay, according to the Republic Act 9285, According to Republic Act 9285, these are the six stages, all right? Six stages in the conduct of the mediation process. Una, opening statement of the mediator. Possibly the mediator will introduce himself, introduce the counsels, introduce everyone in the, uh, in the mediation proceedings, and possibly give an introductory statement about the, the case. After the opening statement, individual narration by the party. So, many tagaan og chansa nga mo istorya ang unang a party, ang complainant. Sunod, mahilo mo ng complainant, may istorya ko na po ang accused. Di kayo maglungan og istorya. Kaya kung maglungan og istorya, may tabo magkagubot. So, dapat individual party shall be given the chance to to speak, to lay down their different arguments. So, not sa narration by the parties, exchanged by the parties. So, muna na panahon nga, pura silang mag-rebattal, nga dapat time. Mauta na usa, tubag ang usa. There will be an, ex uh, an exchange of arguments between two parties. Tapos, pagkahuman, sa exchange by the parties, summary of issues concerning the controversy. So, not sa summary of issues, generation and evaluation of options. So, sa may posible nga mga avenues para masolve ang case or masolve ang uh, masolve ang controversy tapos pag naanay option um closure na dayon if the controversy involved let us say pagpangawat or theft so pwede nga um pagkahuman sa summary of issues pwede generation and evaluation of options tapos usa sa options is mubayad ba ang 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 nagkawat like a specific amount Tapos kung mutugot ang complainant, buta na yun into writing, tapos closure na sa controversy. So note that the magician shall be closed in number in the following manners by the execution of a settlement agreement by the party. So meaning na ana silay, nasabutan. Ikaduha by the withdrawal of any party from magician. So closed ang magician, apil na ana nga ni withdraw ang party. So meaning dili ka na ang Accused ba or ang complainant pa nga wonder ko sila mediation. Bahala na ganahan ang usaka party basta ang usaka party dili ganahan or mo withdraw that means maklose na dyan po ng mediation. Possibly they will uh, resort to court trial. Ikatulo the mediation is closed by the written declaration of the mediator that any further effort at mediation would not be helpful. So even though one of the parties does not withdraw or sila doon wala ni withdraw sa mediation pero 
the mediator, medi the mediator upon his own perception thinks that the effort in the mediation is not helpful, so therefore the mediation proceeding shall be closed or shall be put into closure. So those are the topics under uh, this episode. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you learned something from, from this episode. Thank you and God bless.